In this lesson, I want to talk about what is the purpose of Azure Arc. If we think about Azure, Azure is really, as I've talked about before, the idea of this huge amount of capacity. This capacity is exposed over many, many regions throughout the world, and we consume it through various types of resource. This could be a virtual machine, it might be an AKS cluster for containers, could be a managed data service, could be an app service, could be machine learning, whatever that might be. And in addition to that capacity and resource, Azure gives us lots of governance and management features. I have things like Azure Policy. I have role-based access control. I have tagging. I have various Defender for solutions. When I think about security, this could be Defender for cloud just for all-up security posture. This could be Defender for containers, Defender for Kubernetes, Defender for various types of service to bring enhanced security. And I can think about this all through the Azure Resource Manager. This is this control plane that we use to interact with Azure, be it by a portal, a template, a PowerShell, a CLI, or whatever else. Now, when we talk about Azure is this capacity exposes resources, realize I may have capacity in other places. I may have capacity on premises through my own private clouds. I may have capacity in some other cloud. AWS, GCP, whatever that could be, I may have that capacity. So the whole point of Azure Arc is Arc is going to extend this control plane of Azure to services outside of Azure. I'm going to bring this control plane, this governance set of capabilities to other things. And this could be on-premises, this could be in other clouds. Now there are a number of different solutions for this. The first solution I can think about is Arc enabled servers. So this could be Windows, this could be Linux, this could be a VM, this could be a bare metal, i.e. a physical machine. And what's going to happen here, this Arc enabled for servers is running inside that operating system. I have an agent running inside there, and then once I have this agent, this control plane of Azure via Arc is now extended to whatever that is. So I have some OS instance that now is Arc enabled through that agent. And then the features of Azure and that control plane are brought into this operating system. I can deploy governance with Azure policy and role-based access control. I get things like Defender for cloud for that security posture. I can do patching. I can do other types of automations. I now have tagging available. I can find it in my Azure inventory. I can search for it through resource graph. I have an identity, just like a managed identity, to interact with other services. So it's about extending Azure to resources outside of Azure. This is what Arc enabled servers is doing, and that's fantastic. But realize there's more than just operating systems. I may also have capacity, again, it could be in other clouds, it could be on-premises, that's maybe Kubernetes. Kubernetes is that industry standard orchestrator for containers. I create pods that host there. So once again, there's Arc-enabled Kubernetes. So I can have Arc-enabled Kubernetes. There are services I install inside my Kubernetes instance. It's CNCF um, compatible, so it's compliant with CNCF. It doesn't matter where it is. AWS, GCP, on-premises. And now I'm bringing once again the Azure capabilities through there. Once again, I'm getting all of these capabilities around tagging, policy, um, Defender for Kubernetes. I get GitOps. I have the idea of 
I can point now to a certain get repo and it will automatically pull down the deployment manifest of what should be deployed into there. So I get these really great features in terms of not just managing the Kubernetes, but managing the state of the workloads I wanna run inside it. Once I have Arc enabled Kubernetes, there are actually a whole set of other Arc services that sit on top of Arc enabled Kubernetes. There are Arc enabled data services, SQL managed instance, and Postgres SQL hyperscale. There are Arc enabled app services, and once again, these all sit on top of this Arc enabled Kubernetes um, app services, functions, logic apps. There's also Arc enabled machine learning for training, for inferencing. And these are actually constantly being added to. There's now um, VMware, VM lifecycle, create VMs, start VMs, stop VMs, resize VMs, delete VMs. There's a whole set of solutions all around this. If we look to the portal super quickly, and I just look at my Azure Arc, you can see them. Well, sure, there's Arc for servers. There's Arc for Kubernetes. If I'm using some of the Azure Stack solutions like HCI or Edge, I can layer this on top of it to bring additional management and services. Hey, there's that Arc for VMware vCenters. But then on top of all of these things, well, then I can have these other types of service. I can see, well, data services. I can see those application services. All of these running on Arc. So I can really think about well, what is Arc? Arc is all about the idea of extending that control plane of Azure to capacity, be it an OS or Kubernetes, wherever that capacity may reside. I'm bringing that governance, I'm bringing those security features, those benefits of Azure, but then on top of that, I can then bring down and layer on Azure resources and the service, data services, app services, machine learning services, wherever that may be, really enabling a consistent hybrid cloud. So I focus on the Azure control plane, but hey, if that capacity is in other places as I need it, it doesn't matter. Arc enabled servers, Arc enabled Kubernetes, on-prem in other clouds, and then on this Kubernetes, wherever it resides, data, app, machine learning, that's what Arc is. It's bringing those Azure capabilities to wherever I have that capacity.